Hello, welcome to the another episode of AI Ranch, where we will uh, discover uh, some tools in our image generation. And again, this will be a short episode where I will try to give you insights how it works and what you can do with it. And a little bit from scientific perspective, a little bit from user perspective. As we all know, image generation with AI is a thing now. And uh, the, the way how it's, how it's making, how, how it's becoming better, it's, uh, it's astounding. Like only six months ago, the Dolly 2, you know, was generating images that nobody thought would be actually usable in advertisement campaigns. So they looked almost like a child drawing. So here's the next comparison. So uh, generating a video game for a turn-based strategy video game with the pixel art from top-down view with forests, towns, rivers, and so on. So the Dolly 2 gave this uh, really rough, uh, not beautiful result. And Dolly 3 is almost as artist would made it and you could even use it as it is. And I would like to give you today some insights how to do it yourself. <clears throat> the most important models here that you need to notice are the stable diffusion, which you can actually use for many uh, open source projects, like actually commercial projects. This is an open source solution. It's not bad at all, it's very good. You can even run and generate images on your own computer and you have no restrictions of generating these images because all other tools have really significant restrictions. Uh, then the Midjourney. Midjourney is the main uh, tool for image generation uh, since the beginning. So, and this is implemented as a Discord bot. I will uh, give a short demo how to use it, but uh, this is most uh, user unfriendly, but at the same time, it has the less limitations. It still have limitations. You still cannot generate, you know, uh, criminal activity, uh, you know, some kind of adult content and other things, but, but otherwise it's, it's less limitations than other tools. There are some adult to other tools like Open Journey, uh, Dolly 2, Dolly 3, which is very, very important tool. This is comes uh, by default inside Chat GPT. If you buy Chat GPT license, you can get this also included. And it understands text way better. It can generate text, basically. The other tools are not as good as generating text. If I will ask, generate uh, the birthday card with the uh, label, happy birthday, uh, only Dolly 3 could do this at this moment. Of course, soon it might change, but this is what we have. And then for the post-processing, the, the best ones, which I know, Runway. Runway is very easy to use, very fast to use. It's online, I will show you a little bit. Then the clip drop, and then the uh, Adobe Generative AI, which is the big um, tool here. At the same time, this is more for professionals. The other tools are well, for amateurs, uh, and I myself, you know, not the graphical artist, but I will try to give the way how it works. So stable diffusion, this model, which is one of the basis of all of these models, and you actually see this in mid-journey, it's step-by-step step from random noise generates these images and it combines uh, the, uh, the initial, uh, so it was trained on combination of the image data set and text data set and it tries to match the, these two uh, pieces of information and then when you generate from text alone, it should be able to reconstruct uh, some uh, concepts, some high ideas that were captured in this model. And it works really well. And uh, theoretically, you could feed also an image in it. Some of these models uh, support feeding images, like uh, Dolly 2 and some other to tools. But the latest ones, Dolly 3, Midjourney, yet don't support this, even though it should not be too difficult to add. But there is probably some reason why it doesn't work as well. <clears throat> so the Lego pieces for uh, this kind of prompt engineering. So this would not be chat GPT prompt engineering, but the image generation prompt engineering. So the mid journey already allows you to do this. Mid journey actually, as you see here, allows also imaging, image prompts. Uh, and uh, there is a very precise description of the text prompts. So the LA3 don't have yet image prompts, but uh, hopefully soon will be. So the idea is uh, for the text prompts, you define type, subject, feature, style, aspect ratio, and as much as information you define, the better the result. So now we come to the prompt engineering. 
The prompt engineering is different than for the language models. So main difference is that there is not 2000 words, there is only 20 to 500 words. There is very limited amount of words that you can use. At the same time, you need to use as much as you can. The more descriptive the output, the better, the more descriptive the input, the better the output. You can use existing image and use the prompt sourcing. I will show you just a second how to do that. That's very powerful. You can use the uh, prompt hero. There's a website where there's a lot of prompts you can select from and you can write them yourselves. Uh, and how to write itself, it follows this structure. So you start by the subject. So, and the subject is, uh, is the main focus of the image. In my case, I will just second, I will generate the uh, photo of Superman. So the Superman will be in the front. It could be also, let's say, 30 year old uh, the woman, white woman, Indian woman. It could be the thick book. It could be the coffee mug, the specific size and shape and so on. So that's the focus of the image. The next part is the features. All of the little features that, that could be around, then that's not, actually not around, but features that, uh, that change the subject. Like looking at the camera, that's one. Like is there is, if the, on the coffee mug, are there flowers on it or things like that, all of the small details, that's also important. As much as you can, but at the same time, not too much, try to not make them longer than those 500 words. So then the next step is the background. So is this a cloudy day? Is this a dramatic scene, morning, twilight? All of these things matter. So it's even hard to imagine every single thing to describe. So that's why the prompt sourcing is so powerful. I will show you that. So that's that. Then the style. Is this a realistic style or is this a stylized style or this, is this a like impressionist style, 3D style, portrait, bright colors? Is this like a cartoon style? Everything of that also matters. And finally, what kind of type of this image is? Is this a photo, line drawing, pixel art? It's kind of overlapping with the style, but you know, dramatic photo can work also together. After you create uh, the image, you can use the seed. There is an, a, a method that you can use the seed and improve the same image again, or write some follow-up prompts and so on. Uh, that's the way to go here. So let's try some examples. First of all, let's generate some uh, banner, uh, advertisement banner for, uh, for uh, some kind of uh, detergent, some from cleaning detergent. So I have some kind of generic cleaning the detergent here. The way how to do this easily is to use this, uh, this uh, prompt sourcing technique. I will quickly jump into the, uh, the chat GPT. So because the chat GPT, uh, includes all sorts of image processing tools as well nowadays. So the GPT-4 it is. So the, if you need, must be in GPT-4. It will not work with the free version at all. So in this uh, paid version, what I do, um, I put in the, uh, the banner. And then I will ask to generate uh, this, this prompt sourcing here. So this would be the very precisely the subject, right? Just the, that one part of the, of the whole prompt. Let's see if I can generate that. Describe subject list of keywords uh, using image, image like that. And by the way, this image recognition system uh, works with lots of types of images. You can even translate the plots, you can translate the receipts, you can, you can interact with almost any kind of images, which is very, very, very useful. You can also see that it understands the language, ultra clean, 99% stain removal and so on. So now again, I'm in the Google Docs with a word counter. So that would be very useful for the word counter to be on here. Uh, the chat being is also there. Uh, I opened the chat being for the reason, because you could actually use the chat Bing as well for, for uh, this task. You see there is a button for the image upload. And if I'm trying to do the same task with chat Bing, this gives you the DALI tree and the chat GPT uh, capabilities for free. If somebody wants to try to do this, you can even generate images. I will show you just a second, but you can do this in, for free in uh, chat Bing. So that was that. And let's say, let's make the, the, the more generic. So 
description. So this would be like one liner. So let's see, extract information of image uh, details as categorized lists, multiple lists maybe, maybe like that. So now it will take the image, analyze the image. So you see it says blurring the faces and so on, some funny things happening as well, but, but it will generate the uh, prompt sourcing for me. So from the previous prompt sourcing, I can take all of these details. It is not really perfect. Uh, the subject <clears throat> was not containing all of the information that I, I wanted, but at least some of the information. So I even don't need to bother of adding to, you know, the, the best result would be to add always these, you know, uh, these uh, commas and all sorts of other things. So this is one way how to generate this thing. So this would be the subject itself, laundry detergent, and then the, some kind of features, I would say these would be features. I can even, I can mark them or I can just leave them as this. The, for the language models, it might be important to group them by names, like facts, uh, examples, and so on. For image models, it's not as important as include all of the details necessary. Let's go back here. We can use the uh, the same same thing here. Let's start again, new chat. I will drop in uh, the detergent uh, image and extract all of the details with one liner. So with one liner, this will not be as high quality. For example, if I'm asking to extract just background details, if I'm asking to extract just the style details, this will be way better information, but just one liner purposes, we can use this. Let's generate all of this thing. So now I'm copying all of this and going back to, to my prompt engineering uh, workbench uh, Google Docs. Now I'm just copied all of this thing and we'll try to incorporate this together. Now this is, you know, 160 words uh, prompt. And now I could try to use this to replicate this. This was the input and let's see if I can replicate it just using the prompt sourcing. Now I'm copying in all of that prompt. You use this prompt sourcing technique to extract all of the details that is very difficult for your normal human being to describe. And then you change it the way you want it, right? And then you generate the image and then you can use the post-processing tools to even improve it. So we get, got this, it's very close actually, but it's just a vertical image and there's actually two and it's, it's trying to generate the banner itself inside the image, which is not what I wanted. So again, I could start a new session and improve it again. The one thing it seems that it took uh, the previous generated image as basis for the new one. If you repeat the same prompt multiple times, it might happen that it generates the same image from the previous prompt. Meanwhile, while this is working, we can go also to the uh, chat Bing. I can ask it to generate this kind of image uh, for free. So the chat Bing doesn't cost anything right now, but you can use it to generate the Dolly 3 images. So we generated uh, the uh, image with the change that we added landscape size of the banner. And now it, now it looks uh, much closer to what was the input. Uh, the only difference is mainly that uh, the items are clustered in the center. We could ask it to uh, split it out uh, onto the side, so that's one. Also, the chat Bing worked nicely, and it gave me for free uh, generated uh, images here, which, which are also not that bad. <clears throat> they look about the uh, same quality as in the chat uh, GPT with Dolly 3. <clears throat> so how we would use it practically, if I'm generating some kind of banners or, or some materials, I can go back here, I have all of these fine details of, of the things, I can just start changing things. I can ask that, for example, this will be super clean, not ultra clean, super clean. Let's see if I have ultra somewhere, ultra, no, I don't have. So then 99% stain removal, let's say it's 100% stain removal, not 99%. So there was the landscape part, which is missing here. Let me quickly get the landscape part, landscape size banner, landscape size banner. And also, mm, so the 
uh, elements, elements in banner mm, not uh, cluster together, maybe, let's see. Well, more, more we can add, there's a bright blue background, we could ask the, uh, there is a bright purple background. Let's see if there's something else blue going on here. Blue tones, featuring blue tones, we can add the purple, purple, purple. There's twice background, this could be definitely improved, I can remove that part. If I add more keywords multiple times, it will for, like try to extract the, the similar things between them. So now remember again, you don't write in the same chat. You always start with all of these tools, new chat. So I'm now trying to generate again this thing. So let's say generate image and then the in the quotes and we'll see what I get here. <laughs> again, it seems that it generates the image of the banner itself. It's probably if I remove the keywords of banner, I will remove this part, but you see it's super clean, not anymore what we had before, the ultra clean. And all of the, everything become a purple, not blue. Another example, let's generate the uh, portrait image of Superman with the dramatic scene in the background, cloak flying in the wind, looking at the camera and realistic photo, right? So, and this time the plan is that I want to do some modifications afterwards with that image. You can do the same thing directly inside the directly inside the uh, Dali tree and ChatGPT, uh, where it's a very powerful interface, right? Or you can use the mid mid journey. And mid journey is something that I want to show you. So let's see. So uh, if I using this uh, trompt, by the way, I understood that I don't have here the portrait, uh, portrait, okay, I will add this. <clears throat> so this would be, and here's a typo as well. So this will be much better. If I'm now going to the Discord, uh, the process of connecting Discord bot, uh, the mid journey Discord bot with the, uh, with the system, it's, it's not, not that difficult, it, it, uh, but it's not also super easy. But then if you set it up correctly, then basically what you can do here, you can type imagine and then there comes the prompt. Prompt also have some specific, uh, you know, the setting keywords, but you just use the, the similar approach for Dali tree, where you generate lots of lots of prompt uh, details. You could also get these details, not by guessing, but by taking actual photos of Superman and using the source prompting, which I showed you. So now if I'm sending this command, we'll see what will be the result of it uh, in the dolly. Stable diffusion uh, gradually uh, generates images from noise. It starts from noise and then removes noise slowly towards uh, by priming it, uh, priming it by your prompt. And the results seems to be in the right direction. Not, every, not all of them look like really like a Superman. Then what you do is you can make a variations of first image the here, the second, the third, and so on, the fourth, or you can make the upscale images or you can generate them all again. So I will say the fourth image, it seems about okay. So I will take that one. So now I will trying to generate the upscale image of, of that uh, fourth image. You, could, you can make it even, even higher resolution, but I don't need at this moment. So then I can save the image. Then I will use a tool called Insight Face. Insight Face is a great uh, small add-on companion tool. You see Insight Face Swap that, that you can uh, use for uh, face uh, swapping in the images. So the way how you can use this very effectively is, you know, you don't have time to make professional looking uh, the resume images or something like that. You can generate those images and swap your face with it. So let's see if I can uh, do that. So before to doing this, you need to save ID. So this means you need to upload, uh, save ID, you need to upload your image with your name, but I already uploaded that, so I can use the set ID. So set, uh, so no set ID, but swap ID, swap ID. And here it wants me to write my name so that I evolve and upload image, which I want to use for swapping. And then if I run it, we'll see, it might not work as well, but we'll see. So yeah, you'll see this is attempt of me being a Superman. <laughs>
no, 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 not not too bad. <laughs> but but you can you can you can imagine what what other crazy things you can do with this. And um, as you saw, the the process is naturally not that difficult to do, right? You just type imagine and that's and then write the prompt, and then you can do lots of things here. But again, to set up this, this is not that easy as go, just going to the uh, chat GPT. Uh, let's go on. So there will be two examples where I believe the mid journey is way better than uh, Dolly 3. So first of all, let's generate some kind of close up image of wood grain texture with natural patterns. And this might be super useful for generating data sets or you know, some, some kind of very practical use case, not only something that is fun, but very practical. So let's try to do something that is very practical image task that could be useful, how this, how this actually works. So I'm going back to the, my prompt engineering dashboard, uh, Google Docs. And in the Google Docs, I will write, so wood, uh, smooth wood uh, texture, to double check if there is no grammar errors, hopefully there is no. And you can also generate, as I said, in chat Bing, or you can generate in new session here. So I'm going also to the mid journey. So the mid journey, imagine prompt, I'm just copying the same thing here. And we'll see what is the difference. So if I'm now jumping to the, the other tool, so you will see quite a huge difference. So this is the uh, mid journey. The mid journey actually generated super realistic images that I could then feed into a uh, data set classifier for data sets, for classifiers, for segmentation. So this is extremely valuable. And this is not really what Dolly 3 uh, can do. Um, if somebody can make a prompt that, that does this on Dolly, Dolly uh, 3 would be interesting, but textures and these kind of very specific outputs that you need that are not just artistic, but very useful. Those are way better in the mid journey. So that might be necessary to set up the mid journey account for you. So that's that example. Let's go to the next example. So a uh, coloring page for children, uh, Donald Duck cleaning coins in, in the vault. <laughs> These tools are super, super nice for using for the children. I use it with my children so that they say what they want me to generate, and then I can generate these things. And we will see some, something interesting here. So uh, the Donald Duck is the copyrighted character. <laughs> so, and uh, as the, all of the children actually want these copyrighted characters in most of their uh, coloring pages and so on. And this is really not working great with, with the uh, Dolly tree because they are really concerned about copyright. So, so it's, uh, it is generating actually something that looks like a Donald Duck, but not really. Maybe they changed something recently in the sense that uh, usually it says, I cannot generate Disney characters, it's, it's copyrighted and so on. It's also a funny method how he cleans the, <laughs> the coins, <laughs> but not really the way how you usually clean the coin. He has some kind of strange tool, but, uh, uh, but it's also not really like Donald Duck. I believe that uh, the reason is that uh, it's just um, trying to avoid these copyrights and also try not trying to not annoy users by saying, I cannot generate this and generating something that's similar, but not exactly that. That's something new for them. Let's try to do the same thing also in chat Bing. By the way, sometimes if it doesn't work the first time, you can try again. But in this case, it clearly recognized that I'm asking for Disney character and it's just well, flat outly refuse to generate this kind of content. And the chat GPT and Dolly 3 is a little bit uh, friendlier. So it generates Donald Duck, which does not look really like exactly like Donald Duck and uh, do not complain about copyrights as much, but it might, it might complain as well. So, and then look what happens with the mid journey. Some of the, some of the images were not very successful. So the, the, we could ask regenerate all of them, or we could just make variations of image two, for example. So this will be the variations of image two. All of the Donald Ducks have strange hats there. You can definitely improve on that and some other things, but at least uh, this looks more like a real Donald Duck rather than uh, complaining about copyright. So this is really great use case. Okay, and finally, uh, the last uh, quick use case I want to show you is 
uh, is if, if you have existing images and you want to improve them. So this was one of the feature tools that I showed you and you can start it using immediately for free. It's called uh, the Runway ML. You can, as it says here, you can bring images to life. You can uh, like make some still images animated and looks really nice. Uh, the, one of the best things that I like here is to use this uh, generative fill, erase and replace under the images. So if I use this erase and replace, and if I'm just taking, let's say, my Superman image that I generated just before, and if I'm trying to now change this Superman logo to something else, let's see if I can, I even don't need to be super precise on this. So uh, Batman uh, logo on, on suite. So, and then you see that it worked really nice, actually. And you can imagine what you can do with this and you can even change, get the variations here. This is excellent, see? And if you haven't seen this before, is that uh, the same functionality at the pro level is available also in Adobe Photoshop generative uh, AI. But, but you see here, it works also great. And uh, what we could do uh, to challenge it even more, let's, let's make the, uh, the cape black, for example. Or yeah, let's, you can change the, even your clothing, right? You can try out different clothing here. So uh, black uh, cape. So finally, we could add uh, something super challenging like adding uh, a Batman mask. We'll see if, like, if this works. So it's not, not too bad actually. Uh, it's this is bad, but but some of those images are not too bad. It can be improved, right? You can start with this and uh, and uh, fill again until it's what you want. So finally, the use cases, as I showed you, you can perfectly use this for advertisement materials, presentations, social media posts, like uh, photo shoot improvements, photo improvements. You can even generate icons, logos. There are specialized tools for that. Coloring books for children. Data set generation, I showed you how powerful it is for data set generation, idea generation, and many more things. But this is just a scratch of the surface. And um, yeah, so that's it for today. Thank you for joining the uh, podcast of AI Ranch. As gratitude, subscribe, like, and share, and see you in the next episode.